I'm not technical enough. Partly, this is a limiting belief on everybody's part, but it is something that we hear about all the time when people are looking to transition into the data space. They have this limiting belief that they're not technical enough, and lo and behold, it just puts them into a state of paralysis and they don't move forward. In this video, we're going to talk about how technical is technical enough for you to take the next step into launching your data career. By the way, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Chris. I'm the founder and CEO of Data Engineer Academy. I was data engineer at Lyft, Amazon, startups. I have invested in data companies myself, and now I run the largest data engineering school in the country called Data Engineer Academy. In this video, I'm gonna show you how non-coders are landing their first job in tech as a data analyst and making somewhere between 70, 100, some even as high as 150 grand per year, and then how people are switching from their current tech role, might be a data analyst, into a higher tech role as a data engineer. So going from an analyst to an engineer, Engineer, very common path in the data space. So I'm gonna talk about those two instances and we're gonna talk about how your belief of I'm not technical enough might actually be holding you back. So first things first, your ability to dissect where you are in this technical spectrum is super important because data analysts aren't actually software engineers. Data analysts aren't doing complex systems. They're not actually building very complicated looking code. Data analysts are more business people and they're just looking at data in order to make those business decisions. Now, yes, you might have to learn some code such as SQL in order to help you find the business insights faster and automate reports and do all that. But if you've ever worked with an Excel sheet, then you probably are already some sort of data analyst because when you're looking at an Excel sheet and you've created graphs in an Excel sheet, basically becoming a data analyst is just taking all of that work and automating it with code. So instead of you manually creating the chart on Excel and automate that and put it into a dashboard such as Tableau or Power BI by using tech and tech tools and tech languages such as SQL, Python, R, etc. The reason I say that is because A, you probably have already dealt with data, so you're more technical than you think. But B, the other thing that's really important to be a data analyst is actually be a great communicator. And this is something that isn't discussed as much because to get the business insight is one thing, to be able to communicate it is an entirely different thing. So whether it's a business analyst or a data analyst or a BIE, your job is still to be able to communicate those business insights or those technical insights to non-technical folks, i.e. your business stakeholders and cross-functional teams. So if you can think logically, organize information and explain that information, then you might already be technical enough to become a data analyst if you are looking to transition into the space for the first time. The second part that you need to recognize is what is actually the things you need to learn. And specifically for this crowd of going from non-technical to technical, we'll talk about the more technical crowd in a second, you don't actually need 20 tools. If you know Excel, you have dealt with data in some way, then you just need to learn how to automate that reporting. And that's typically done with two things. Number one is SQL. Number two is some sort of dashboarding tool. Tableau is a good enough one or Power BI is a good enough one. We use QuickSight at our company. It's Amazon AWS's tool. Once you know which tools you need, you kind of realize, oh, I don't need to go get a master's program. And I kind of never needed to do college to begin with. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because that is typically the biggest mistake I see people make, which is going from doing your job to potentially quitting and going to get a master's or a college degree. That is something that is not necessary in today's world. Now, if you are already somewhat technical, let's say you're a software engineer or a Java developer, and you're trying to figure out, hey, how technical do I need to be, then click on the link or go to Data Engineer Academy and book a call because that's exactly what we will help you, a more technical person, dissect based on where you currently are and where you're trying to go. Because for example, a Python developer might need to do, let's say, AWS and SQL, whereas a SQL developer might need to do Python and AWS, right? So the gap in which a technical person has to assess is going to be entirely different because every tech person and every tech title is at a different 
different starting point. And if they're at a different starting point, then you need to actually dissect what does your resume look like? What do your past couple of years look like? And what have you learned on the side so that we can figure out, hey, what is the actual gaps that you need to fill? Because here's the benefit to somebody like you. Yes, your technical enough spectrum is probably the accurate in the sense of like, hey, I need to learn more technical things, a lot more technical things. But the upside is that you don't need to start from scratch because you already have technical experience. The person who has tech experience is not the same person that has zero tech experience. In fact, it's entirely two different avatars. And if you're not careful, you can start from scratch when you really don't need to and you can save months, quarters. I've seen people save years of time. Keep that in mind book a call. Now, as an added bonus, I'm going to talk to you about some non-technical roles that you can also do that are also in the tech space. My favorite one is anything TPM related. Let me be clear. There's product manager, there's program manager, and then there's technical product manager. And for the sake of this conversation, the first two, let's just say it's the same thing. The second one is a technical product manager, which is basically similar to the first two. So here's the difference. The first two are allowing you to move projects along, right? You're the person who's going to move projects along, be organized, uh, uh, come up with timelines, budgets, communicate with stakeholders, making sure that the project is getting pushed. The second one from a technical product manager, it's more or less the same thing, but it's hyper focused on the engineers themselves. So if you are somebody who has either some tech experience but wants to stop coding, or you're somebody who is kind of tech savvy but doesn't know how to code but wants to be associated with tech, or specifically check out the technical product manager role because that role gets you close enough to the game without you having to sit and code every day because that's not for everybody. And we understand that there's people that want to be in tech without having to code four hours a day. Last but not least, and before I finish, please subscribe, share, comment so that we can keep getting activity video on our channel so that I can keep making content just like this. Now, I'll leave you with this as the final thing. The reason I started this company is because we thought data was going to explode. And lo and behold, this happened right before ChatGPT. And so the data has actually exploded. And the reason is because AI creates more data, data creates more AI, AI creates more data. So data engineers, data analysts, there'll always be a spot for somebody who's good with numbers, good with data. This was true 100 years ago a thousand years ago moving forward as well. Now, the technical field or the technical title or the skill sets might look different, but if you're good with data, if you're good with numbers, you always have a spot, right, in the workforce. With that said, the reason now is the time is because just data is everywhere. It's growing, it's growing faster. Unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know it's not going anywhere. The number one thing, if I had to break some limiting belief of yours, is the saying of like, I'm not technical enough. What does enough mean and what does technical mean? If you define or redefine those terms, or make it a little more fluid, you might realize, oh, wait a second, I can do this. It just takes a couple months of studying, right? So hopefully here's your wake up call so that you can start to have that mindset shift because if you have that mindset shift now, you'll be well equipped once you actually start your studies. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, comment below how technical are you currently and how technical are you trying to become? And let's see if Data Engineer Academy can help you do just that. Cheers.